So um, we did make a, a, an announcement about all the updates to our endpoint offering. Uh, again, this encompasses both file sharing, collaboration, and, um, and data protection. The two primary uh, pieces of news is uh, are, um, the introduction of what we call military-grade security. So um, with, with this new feature set, we have now expanded support for native data loss prevention. Um, as well as tools to mutually authenticate end users as they're uh, accessing and collaborating on files. And we'll explain what that means in just a little bit. In addition to that, we continue to invest very heavily on, a, on um, the best possible user experience. Um, we want to make sure that our customers enjoy consumer-grade ease of use um, that ultimately drives adoption of the platform and um, and um, the end user communities uh, look to, to use the solution because of its ability to, uh, to make their lives more productive. So um, our overall thesis is that if you have end user adoption, then you have data governance. So spend a lot of time making the solution easier and easier to use uh, as time goes on. So let's, let's um, decompose both of these points and, um, and see what was announced. So, um, so we have a, a class of customers that are continually requesting of Citera that we, um, we build more and more controls to your data into the platform as opposed to integrate with various third-party services that, um, that we also do. Um, and so, so they really want to bring the, the governance as close as possible to the, the file management system. And um, uh, that starts with really um, extending the way that uh, you can control how files are both added and collaborated on in the system. So um, since the introduction of version 5.0 where we had what we call upload policies, um, we've, we've extended that uh, tool set to also include collaboration rules. So we essentially call this a, a collaboration file firewall. And, and um, what it enables is organizations to define sharing policies based on user profiles and groups. And all of this can be done according to the domains that um, um, you're looking to share with. We also have support now for preview only sharing. Uh, if you're looking to restrict a collaborator's ability to download a specific document. Now you can establish not only a, a sharing privileges, either read or read write, but we now also feature preview only, in which case um, there would be no ability to download a file from a, a secure share. Um, and so that, that very closely complements an additional feature that we're happy to announce around file watermarking. And so now we can display either a um, a recipient's email address or IP address onto a file so that if somebody gets smart and decides that they want to screenshot um, uh, a specific preview only file that they've been given, that file will be, or that, that screenshot will be stamped with the user's identity on it. So you'll at least establish a chain of custody. Here's an example of the um, of the collaboration firewall. You can see that we can decompose uh, the, the policies by the various groups, you can define um, by email the domains that can and cannot be shared with, uh, and then you've got all sorts of uh, capabilities around allowing or denying sharing, authenticating user, how they get authenticated, and um, the maximum permissions that you can set on those files. Here's an example of uh, setting privileges so that they can be preview only, fairly straightforward as you set up uh, shared spaces and collaboration groups within the CTERRA portal. And then here's an example of um, our watermark capability. And um, you can see at the bottom here, in addition to the confidentiality stamp, what you have is John Smith at Yahoo, uh, who is the, um, the recipient of the file. So if this, for some reason, uh, was snapshotted or screenshotted and, and sent out into the world, people would know who actually did, um, did that. One of the other things that we're very excited to announce is the support for bi-directional authentication or what we call mutual authentication. Um, so if you're familiar with the, uh, the, um, the file sharing space and the various technologies in play, um, uh, it's, it's no secret that almost all popular products today have support for two-factor authentication. 
Um, and, and so the, the, um, the challenge for certain organizations is that's almost always used for external collaboration, sharing outside of a, a domain. Um, and um, and so, so organizations typically just trust Active Directory as the kind of the exclusive uh, system of record from an authentication perspective. Um, however, there are a class of customers that Cterra deals with um, because we have such a strong so focus on security that, that want to go to additional uh, measures to, to basically ensure that um, people accessing files and collaborating fi on files are who they say they are. And so, um, so we've done this by, by supporting now client-side uh, certificates, security certificates. And what this means is that in addition to the clients authenticating to the, to the portal and making sure that the server is who it, it actually um, claims to be, um, the portal now authenticates clients and, um, uh, and, and um, using multi-factor authentication tools such as smart cards can, can take an additional measure to ensure that a user is who they say they are. So, um, so um, when we think about where this product is, uh, is, is designed for, um, the first thing that we think about is, is various defense customers um, and extremely secure uh, national security organizations around the world. Um, in the US, there's a specific standard called CAC, which stands for Common Access Card. Um, and CAC cards are used to not only get you into physical buildings, but they're also used to get you into networks and onto software that has, um, has data uh, on it. So, um, so by, um, by supporting client-side certificates and multi-factor authentication using them, now we can support CAT card authentication of users getting into enterprise file services. Um, but we think about this solution well beyond defense markets. Um, we support other types of government imp um, implementations of uh, multi-factor user authentication. Um, in the civilian space, oftentimes they call this a, a PIV card, uh, at least in North America, um, and uh, basically is the, um, the non-defense version of a smart card that you can authenticate with. And so using PIV um, technology, uh, there are a number of agencies that already support this as a standard ranging from um, transportation to space to treasury to environment, health and state departments, but also um, we're finding that these types of uh, solutions are also in demand from state governments um, that, are, that are looking for additional security controls within their organization. Um, and and the, the other important thing to consider is that uh, this type of solution is not limited to the public sector, uh, and we find that there are specific uh, vertical markets where multi-factor authentication is also very um, appealing. Um, these are typically places that have that same level of security centricity, ranging from utilities to healthcare to transportation to, to even media production. Um, there are a collection of markets that are, that are implementing specific end-user controls when end-users have access to critical information. So again, um, one of the other aspects of the, of the developments that we're talking about today is around user experience, and uh, it's entirely critical to adoption. Um, we've implemented some, some new user experience enhancements that we think make it easier to use and to navigate uh, the Cterra platform. Um, the first is that we have a first-time user portal tour, portal tour and, uh, and, and Simon will walk you through that. Uh, we have a, a new mobile experience that is five times faster than our previous uh, offering. And um, for our endpoint backup users, we now also support cross-operating system um, migration. So, um, so, so as I mentioned, Simon will walk you through the, the portal tour introduction. Um, the mobile experience comes from having a new responsive uh, application that features things such as caching uh, in order to achieve a 5x improvement on performance versus uh, our previous mobile application. Um, and we're also happy now to announce in-place document editing that you can do from your mobile device. So, um, so one of the other aspects of the solution is around um, cross-operating system migration when people are doing um, system restores. And so um, uh, this is important for organizations that are thinking about desktop migrations 
or for organizations where um, people want to support, let's say, a bring your own device strategy, and users may have been started on a, a Windows or a PC-based system and want to move to something like a, a Mac product. And um, using our, our PC to Mac uh, migration tools, um, what we can ensure is that as uh, users move from one platform to another, that their file hierarchies and structures are preserved with the context of the information as they move from um, one operating system platform to another. Uh, so, for example, your, your documents folder transfers into your documents folder, your photos end up in your folders folder, et cetera, et cetera. So it makes for a very elegant experience for end users that may want to move to uh, different types of devices. Um, speaking of Mac, we also have um, improved Mac UX support. So uh, we now integrate search with Spotlight. This is a, a feature that we've been wanting to get out for a long time. Um, uh, the solution supports um, uh, now Mac notifications, so uh, as files are being backed up or being synchronized, as, um, as changes happen to files that you may be sharing on your desktop with maybe a number of other collaborators, as software updates happen, all of that um, immediately publishes to the notification center and you get uh, little updates as they happen. Uh, in addition to that, we also support um, uh, right-click context so that you can um, do file operations just by right-clicking on um, files. You can do backup operations from there. In addition to that, um, there's icons that are overlaid on top of the files and folders that show you, yes, they're synced or yes, they're protected. And um, all of that happens just natively from, um, from your Mac. Uh, as mentioned as well, um, we have mobile editing support. So uh, there's a document editor that is built into uh, um, well, I should say there's, um, there's a, a, a document manager that's built into um, various mobile platforms and now as you open up Microsoft Office through your mobile devices, whether it be your iPhones, your um, Android systems, your tablets, what have you, um, you can open and create Word documents, you can um, create Excel spreadsheets and presentations, and all of them can be saved natively into uh, the Cterra Cloud Drive. Um, through this integration. So it's basically supported on anything from iOS 8.0 and on and um, Android 4.4 and on. And uh, essentially it takes away the complications of having to store files in your mobile device and then move them into, um, let's say, your, your Cterra cloud drive. All of that happens natively as part of the app. Um, okay, so just a quick reminder um, on, on the solution set in total. Uh, and, and to put this all in context, um, our first endpoint service that we've been talking about is Enterprise File Sync and Share. Uh, this is the ability to basically synchronize files across um, both user devices as well as um, Cterra's cloud storage gateways for a fully unified um, file management system that extends between the endpoint and the office and the cloud. Um, this is a solution that's designed for self-service productivity. So you can create secure projects, you can send secure links through Outlook integration, um, and that allows you to, of course, optimize mail so that you can send files of any size as well as to, uh, to, to take it easy, if you will, on um, Exchange servers. And it's the only product in the marketplace that supports a completely integrated system and file management model that includes both NAS as well as next generation cloud-based file sync and sharing. So, um, so it's ideal for organizations that have a class of uh, either applications or users that um, are mixed between legacy modes of file management such as uh, NAS and um, next generation, um, let's call it more mobile and browser-based access points. And so, um, so you can create projects and you can share files across um, all sorts of different devices as well as cloud storage gateways from Cterra um, for offices that may have uh, uh, a farther connection to some central cloud data center or maybe that need fast local access to files and to projects. So Cterra is um, very unique in this capability. We call this uh, approach to managing files across um, different types of endpoints and office infrastructure. Follow me data, and it's uh, it's it's an exclusively Cterra approach uh, 
to managing files. And from a backup perspective, um, again, the, the backup tools, the endpoint backup tools that we offer are, um, are uh, globally deduplicated, compressed, and encrypted at the source and can be sent um, to the portal directly using our, our agents or work in conjunction with our cloud storage gateways in cases where you need land speed access to backups um, and to recover at land speeds. Um, so the endpoint backup agents are um, shell integrated backup services that are um, easy to protect and to recover files, uh, supports services such as um, previous versions. So you can right click and just get a previous version of a file. Um, you can also get to your data anywhere, anytime from a web browser. And now we support uh, even cross-platform restores. Um, and so it's designed for self-service, which is actually um, critically important in today's world um, for reasons that we find customers are increasingly dealing with attacks from um, ransomware. Uh, so these um, new viruses are basically encrypting um, encrypting files and, and you have to pay a ransom to, to actually decrypt your files. And so, um, so if we compare what's happening in the marketplace, uh, in 2015 the FBI stated that uh, there were $29 million of ransomware payments made uh, around the world. And in the first quarter of this year, uh, that number has ballooned to $209 million. And if we were to trend that out uh, throughout the whole year, um, essentially we're talking about a billion dollar market that is compromising organizational ability to get to your, um, your files. So we will be hosting a webinar on this topic specifically in, in um, July. Uh, July 14th, and we'll send an update to that uh, along with this, um, with the summary of this today's webinar. But uh, but ransomware is becoming a, a major major problem in the market. Uh, there's a proliferation of of, um, of technologies that are really compromising business continuity and business productivity. And the important thing, as we kind of reflect on those two end user services that I talked about earlier, file sharing and synchronization, as well as backup. In both cases, what we have is limitless file versioning, which allows organizations to protect themselves from ransomware, as well as other types of viruses, and basically in real time. Um, and so we're, we're now on a weekly basis finding customers coming to us saying, thank you so much, you saved us from having to pay a boatload of money to um, these hackers in Russia, uh, because we were able to just immediately roll back to a previous version of our, our files, or maybe even our whole devices. So, um, so, so before we get to Simon, um, that's the news that we're excited to uh, to to unveil. Um, we do have always a, a trial environment that we've built. Um, you can sign up today and um, download the newest version of our software. Begin to test it for your own purposes. Um, we offer both uh, end user accounts as well as um, administrator accounts for uh, deployment of the solution in a, in a public cloud or in a private cloud. And so uh, feel free to go to cterra.com slash trial to get access to all the latest and greatest. So with that, um, I'd like to turn the discussion over to Mr. Simon. And uh, Simon, are you there? Simon. I'm here. Ah, cool. Hello. Okay. Can you hear me now, Jeff? Good. Yeah, you're great. Okay. So you are Perfect. Now Thank you. Um, yes. Okay. My screen online. Do you see it? We got you. Okay. Perfect. So let's check check out some of uh, some of the enhancements uh, that uh, Jeff. Um, announce and, and walk through during his presentation uh, and, and examine um, uh, the end user experience improvements uh, throughout uh, our solution. So first things uh, first, uh, let's uh, start with uh, our brand new SAML integration onto to our portal. Um, so what we can see here, um, in this demo we are going to show uh, how we can delegate the authentication part to our platform um, 
for web uh, access uh, or in, and also of course uh, logging in using the various different types of CTRA clients uh, through an external what we call an identity provider. Um, there are many solutions out there in the market, cloud-based or on-prem solutions. Um, companies such as uh, Okta, OneLogin, Ping Identity, um, the on-prem uh, solutions uh, based on Microsoft um, ADFS. Uh, all of those systems provide uh, uh, identity federation services. Um, and, it, and, it, and basically able to centralize um, enterprise user identities and and by doing that, also authenticate users to all of the different enterprise ap applications you have deployed, um, and among of those, CTR, of course. So, if we examine that a typical end-user flow, um, web access onto the CTR portal platform, uh, I'm just going ahead and just going to type in uh, the portal address here at the top, and I won't be prompted with a regular login page of CTRA portal. Instead, I'll be redirected to my identity provider where I will be asked to supply my credentials. Um, so what we can see here in front of us is uh, Okta. Okta is one of those identity providers uh, that support the SAML version 2 protocol. And I'm just go ahead and uh, type in my um, corporate credentials. So here's my username and my password. And now what's going to happen is essentially Okta is going to tell Citera, Citera Portal, hey, this is Simon, let him through, of course, in a secure manner that uh, um, is part of uh, uh, the SAML protocol. So by clicking on sign in, as you can see, I'm already um, logged in to, to my Citera Portal. Now for uh, subsequent uh, sessions or um, web access uh, to CTR portal, of course I won't be asked for that information again. I'm just going ahead and type in my credentials and there you go. Um, I didn't have to supply them again and I'm already back in uh, my portal web page. This uh, uh, this actually brings us to the next feature uh, that uh, was uh, announced, and that's our end-user uh, first-time tutorial, where we walk you through the basic steps of how to use your cloud drive. Um, so, as it, what you will see here is uh, um, a mix between of a very professional, I would say, somewhat even cute tutorial that uh, walks the users through his basic steps on how he can do upload and uh, and and manage and do the the regular file operations with his uh, with his uh, personal and shared data. So let's uh, walk through the tour. Um, I'm first um, being instructed and in and um, the portal guides me through the different containers that I have uh, my files where it holds my personal data and shared with me, which is a container for uh, all of the data that was shared by other people with in the organization with me. Um, I'm guided on how to access my account information for profile info, the amount of licenses and, and storage that I consume as a, as a user in the system. Um, this is my home folder and I'm now I'm going to be taught how to upload files to that folder either using the actions that we can see here at the top or simply using a drag and, drag and drop uh, directly from my desktop onto the web interface and the files will just automatically upload. Now uh, we upload a getting started PDF file. This PDF file uh, will also uh, give you some additional information on how to use uh, the CTRA clients, um, the agent that installed on a Mac or Windows PC, uh, how to use the Outlook in the Integration plugin where you can uh, securely send links uh, instead of actual file attachments and um, some more information on how to install the Citera mobile application. Um, some of the other actions that we can perform on a specific file such as download, delete, rename, copy or move. And in case we uh, remove the file um, for some reason, as uh, Jeff mentioned, we have limitless uh, um, uh, data retention on our portal. Um, it can be used for um, for 
many reasons for uh, ransomware, as Jeff mentioned, and also for typical scenarios where you would want to look at previous versions of your files, compare them, especially when you're working in a group and um, more than one person can work on the same file uh, simultaneously. So definitely the capabilities of uh, recovering deleted data or accessing previous versions of that uh, file or folder are very important. And sharing is caring. <laughs> and um, this, uh, t this page actually walks you through um, the two uh, various w two ways that we have to share data from within CTR portal. So first of all, by generating a link to a file, a public link that you can send um, to everybody um, through email, for instance, and anybody who has that link can obtain access to the data or uh, using our more secure way of uh, handling collaboration is uh, this collaboration option where you can specifically specify the users and the groups that are allowed to uh, access the data and uh, for those users um, and groups apply specific authentication schemes like two-factor authentication to the data and uh, also limit the access rights uh, for individual users. And we are all CTRA certified, and uh, here we are presented uh, with the links that point to the uh, App Store uh, for us to download the mobile application. Of course, all of these links that you can see here are configurable, so as part of our solution, we have full white labeling support, and uh, as part of that, we also offer white labeling our mobile applications, so uh, all of this can be um, controlled by the CTRA portal administrator. And uh, this tutorial can also be customized, so you can look at it as a, as a, a marketing platform. Um, you can uh, alter the text, the icons, and uh, truly make it look um, uh, like uh, your own uh, service within the enterprise. So let's enjoy Citera and uh, continue to our uh, next uh, feature announcement. Um, so the next one is... Uh, uh, what we call the collaboration firewall or the collaboration policies where w the CTERA portal administrator can uh, restrict uh, sharing uh, with specific domains and apply certain rules uh, for the allowed uh, uh, sharing options. So if we look here, uh, this is the CTERA portal administration interface and here we can see the, the firewall policy that, we, that I set before this demo. So I just logged into the system as Simon, as an end user, and Simon is uh, actually a member of two different groups uh, within the portal, both of the finance and the operations groups. And here we can see an order list of uh, rules that specify the uh, allowed and denied options uh, for sharing data. So we can see that all users are not able to share with um, anything that ends with orders.com, Gmail, and Yahoo. Um, but uh, the members of the finance teams can uh, share with orders.com and uh, members of the operations team can share with a specific email address from the Yahoo domain. So let's see that in action. Let me just go ahead and uh, click on this uh, share file option and uh, just uh, let's input a, a Gmail address. Um, so. Uh, Let's put jeff at gmail.com. And there we have it. We get an error message saying that the policy does not allow us to share files with this email address. Now, if we go and copy um, this Yahoo email address, let's go ahead and see that also Yahoo is not allowed. So we get the same error message. And if we use uh, the email address that was approved by the administrator, we can see that we were able to add this user to the uh, collaboration, uh, what we call the collaboration dialog. Now, another thing that you can see here is that our default access rights, where it says here read only, and um, the authentic method were also um, 
inherited from 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 the um, administration administrator policy. So here for the operations group that sh is sharing data with Michael Denworth from Yahoo.com, uh, we can let the user choose um, the authentication either uh, using two-factor or use it, using uh, another code that will be sent through email and um, the maximum permission. Um, so I can set up to read-write permission. But if we look at this option, the first one, where it says that finance can share with orders but they are restricted to go through uh, two-factor over email and the maximum permission uh, will be read-only. So let me just go back and use uh, add someone from the orders.com domain. So let's put again Simon at orders.com. Okay, so if we click here on the access rights option, I don't see the read write option because the administrator specifically specified that uh, the maximum privilege that I can share um, would be read only. So up to that would be only preview or no access at all. And if we click on this uh, lock button, we can see that I don't have any options to choose for the authentication type because it was already predefined to be email, two-factor over uh, email. So this tool essentially gives you uh, the control, the proactive controls that uh, um, you can uh, prevent uh, sensitive data leakage uh, from your enterprise. So let me go ahead and click Save. And there we have it. Okay, good. So if we continue to our next uh, feature announcement, um, as part of uh, um, adding more and more controls of uh, preventing uh, sensitive data leakage or uh, compromising your digital rights. Um, you probably saw that when I opened up this access rights option, we also had a preview only uh, access right. Um, so first of all, as an administrator, I can uh, restrict that data will be shared out of the organization using the preview, preview only permission, that's fine. But I, I can also, um, if the administrator allowed me to, to do even more than that, I can, as an end user, I can restrict the data will be shared as preview only. Now, before this demo, I shared with my account um, a folder in from Andrew Jackson. So this documentation folder was shared with me, Simon, by Andrew Jackson, and it was shared with me in a in a read in a preview only access right. So as you can see, I don't have any actions here at the top. I don't have anything. I can um, I cannot download. I cannot rename, move, copy the file. Um, I don't have even uh, read-only access to synchronize th this file to my PC. I can only use the integrated uh, uh, web preview uh, on Citera portal to view the file. So when I click here, um, as part of the preview-only permission, you can see that the, do the document is watermarked with this diagonal confidential string. And at the bottom, we see that um, it was sent to me. Okay, we can see the, the email address of the recipient uh, who got this share, and the, it says that it's not for distribution. So in case I choose to print screen and 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 copy uh, this uh, and, and copy this information, um, you would be able to associate this uh, with with me with my account and uh, understand that I was the one who leaked the data out of the, out of the organization. So, of course, uh, this feature is uh, supported for both what we call collaboration and public links. And um, in case of public links, for instance, um, we would specify also the IP address, the, the client IP address who accessed the files and folders. Moving on, and uh, let's examine the endpoints. So here I'm on my Mac. This is my agent installed on my uh, MacBook Pro. And uh, as part of our um, new additions um, to the uh, endpoint installed on, on the PC, we can see the notification bar. 
Um, so um, all of the notifications that now um, uh, pop up from the agent will be stored in the native uh, notification manager uh, for Mac where uh, users would expect them to be. Um, so you can look here that um, I haven't um, done a backup in, uh, in three days. I just had a recent software update to 5.5.144. Uh, but then I didn't backup for three days, but recently uh, I just clicked on the backup and, uh, and uh, just completed an incremental update of my, uh, of my data, of my MacBook data uh, to the portal. So any update uh, for uh, file changes, uh, system notifications um, will be uh, available through this notification manager going forward. Um, if I open up my Finder, uh, my Finder and uh, access my Cloud Drive, so you, I have my shortcut here at the top under Favorites. Um, I have the folders that I've chosen to sync to this MacBook Pro and I get first of all the icon overlay on top of those folders so the check mark means that this is a folder that is currently uh, synced, synced with CTR portal. Uh, the plus sign means that this archive folder is selected for backup and let's uh, look at this, I open up uh, my files, I also get this uh, indication for any file or folder within um, the synchronized uh, uh, folder uh, I can uh, choose uh, do the secondary click on this personal folder, and there you go. I also have uh, these options uh, for the folder. I can exclude it from a sync. I can share it, um, browse online, and even generate a link to this file. So I can uh, uh, put it in an email thread and, and send it to my colleagues. So if we click on uh, share this folder options, for instance, this will open up um, my web page. I won't be prompt to enter credentials and I will see uh, the collaboration dialog as it was before and I can immediately start typing those names of users and groups that I want to share my uh, data with. And uh, lastly, we can uh, have a look at our brand new mobile application. And uh, here we can uh, see uh, the brand new CTR mobile app, which is available for both iOS and Android today on the Apple and uh, Play stores. And uh, this app features, uh, uh, this is a complete from uh, ground up uh, uh, effort for, um, for a, f a 5x uh, performance improvement and uh, a much more integrated experience uh, uh, for the end user. Um, so I'm just going going to type in my credentials and uh, access my account. We, you can see my avatar that was downloaded from my account on the portal. Um, the application welcomes me in. Um, it's very quick. It's very 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 slick. Uh, whoop! Notification. Um, we use the uh, native gestures that a user would expect uh, for all of the file operations for updating, uh, searching for files and folders. Um, I can go here into my documents, um, click on the plus sign on the top right, and choose new folder, type in uh, um, personal docs, create. And now I can uh, click take a photo or a video, use photo and start uploading it to my uh, personal docs. I can click on um, the, the file options for a specific file and I can create a new link. I can set an expiration for that link very very easily. So let's put it in uh, June 2018 click create and select email and type in the address of the recipient now we also invested a lot in security 
um, and security going forward. So one of the things that you can see here, whenever I uh, uh, I move my app to the background, it's completely blur. Uh, I cannot see any of uh, the data, even when uh, going into the background. So uh, a lot of uh, security options integrated to the app, um, support for uh, um, mobile device management systems such as uh, Good and uh, Mobile Iron, um, support for passcode. So if I go here to the settings menu, I can require passcode. I can set my passcode. And so whenever I will be accessing the app, I'll be asked to input my passcode. Um, I can also share folder, I can also share share files and folders uh, from uh, my photo apps, uh, from any other app on the phone and uh, quickly upload it to my cloud drive. I can attack files uh, to open up to uh, existing email threads that exist on my cloud drive. So definitely a lot of uh, um, improvements made on how the app is um, communicating with the rest of the day-to-day -day applications that you use as a user. You can access your backups, your your current uploads. So this is the image that we uh, uploaded uh, just uh, a minute ago, and um, that's it.